Did you know that as a believer, you are the righteousness of Jesus Christ? Listen, we are not our accomplishments, and we certainly aren't our past mistakes. So we need to let go of our past so it doesn't hold us back. I'm Michelle, so if this is the first time you're here, what you will find here is faith-based content. It encourages you in the truth of God's word. So please subscribe to this channel so that we can continue to build a community of real Jesus followers. Okay, today the word I have for you is based on righteousness. So let's get to it. The reality is, is that we were created in the image of God and we're his representation here on earth. Listen, sin came and tarnished that reality, but Jesus Christ came to restore that reality. And we are called to live in that reality of Jesus Christ. So when we imitate Christ, we are living in the reality that God created us for. So today I want to talk to you about righteousness. And we know that the breastplate of righteousness, it is part of our spiritual armor. But as I was studying for this message, I found out that we need the belt of truth in place before we can put on the breastplate of righteousness. The belt of truth is not just knowing that Jesus Christ paid for our sin debt in full. Like literally, that's what Jesus came to do. God sent him to pay for our sin debt in full, to die on the cross, and to restore our relationship with the Father. Because listen, sin requires death. That's what the word says. So somebody had to die in order to pay for the sin debt. So God's not going to rewrite his plan or rewrite his word or redesign his plan just because Adam and Eve sinned and ruined the whole thing. No, we must believe that we are righteous and holy because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The only way to do this is to see ourselves the way God sees us. He sees us through what Jesus Christ has already done. He sees us through the lens of Jesus Christ. So in order to live that out, we have to know truth. And yes, it takes a lifetime to live this out. But listen, it's called sanctification. Sanctification is a good thing because the Lord refuses to leave us where he found us. But in order to live a righteous life before the Father, we must know truth because the main goal of all of Satan's attack is deception. Okay? If he can get us to believe that the Father loves us conditionally, then every time we mess up, we feel unrighteous and unloved because that's what happens with a conditional love relationship. You know, and then we go back to living a defeated life and we stop believing the truth. So that's why we have to believe and live by the truth. We can't just know it intellectually. You know, wearing the belt of truth, it keeps us stable. It keeps us strong and it keeps us from easily being moved by Satan's lies. Listen, wearing the belt of truth allows us to stand firm against the schemes of the enemy. It gives us the freedom that we would not otherwise have. Listen, truths like 2 Corinthians 5, 20 and 21, it says, therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of of Christ be reconciled to God for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God that's 2 Corinthians 5 20 and 21 and then in Psalms 37 17 it says the Lord upholds the righteous we are the righteous Psalms 55 22 says he will never Permit the righteous to be moved. How is that for a promise? As the righteousness of Christ, he will never permit us to be moved 
from our stable place. And in Psalms 146, 8, it says, The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord loves us with an unconditional love. Sometimes when we're being deceived by the devil, unfortunately, we don't even realize it sometimes. You know, the enemy can really make us think that we are not really who God says we are. And especially when we sin and mess up. What we receive from knowing and living the truth is an unchanging standard for ourselves based on the word of God. Listen, Satan loves it when we put our feelings first. Like when we feel this way or that way, we believe that to be truth. You know, we believe that God must love us less when we do this. You fill in the blank, okay? Feelings change. Emotions change. They're unstable. You know, the right circumstance or situation with the right people can make us the happiest people on the planet. But that same environment with those same people and situations and things not going our way, my goodness, we can be in the worst mood on the planet. It's because feelings change based on our external conditions. You know, feelings are not bad. They do have their place, but they do not always help us discern the right things, okay? But truth, that's a different story. My favorite verse is John 8.32. It says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, what truth is that? It's the truth that a relationship with Jesus Christ obtained through salvation means the forgiveness of our sins through his death on the cross, which means we have been made right with God. This truth is our core support. This truth is going to be our support when we face difficult and trying times and when we are in a spiritual battle. Psalms 119.60 says, all your words are true and your righteous laws are eternal. In Ephesians 4, 20 and 24, it says, that, however, is not the way of life you learned. When you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus Christ, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And in Genesis 15, 6, it says, Abraham believed the Lord and it was credited to him as righteousness. And who are we to Abraham? We are Abraham's seed. We are Abraham's offspring. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ, righteousness is credited to us. Righteousness is not manufactured. It is released. God imparts Christ's righteousness to us and he makes us holy and blameless in his sight. Now, how do we put this into practice practically? Well, we have to commit ourselves to the truth set by God in scripture, okay? We cannot live by our truth or their truth. We must live by the truth set by God in scripture. We must commit to letting God help us align our daily decisions and responses to his truth. I know that if we're not basing our decisions and our responses on God's truth, we can make some pretty poor decisions. And we can have some pretty poor responses sometimes, right? Amen. If we are not basing those responses and those decisions on God's truth. Next, we have to let God help align our convictions with his truths. Listen, when the Holy Spirit convicts us, that is a good good thing. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict us and help us to resemble the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the convictions of the Holy Spirit, my goodness, we would just be lost in our old ways, not even knowing that we are walking in error. Thank God for the Holy Spirit's convictions. Next, we must filter every circumstance 
through the lens of his word. Like every circumstance that we face, if we filter it through the lens of God's word, we are going to be living in truth and not in error. Truth becomes our starting place. And then everything else starts to fall into place. Listen, righteousness simply means right living, which means the process by which we apply truth to our lives and produce the conduct honoring and pleasing to God. The truth is God's spirit lives on the inside of us. And because of this, we can live in a way that is honoring to God. Listen, if we don't live by truth, God's absolute truth, then there is no real freedom. Church, righteousness is going to make us look different from the world because it's about holiness and obedience to God. Righteousness is upright living that aligns us with the expectations of God, not the expectations of man but the expectations of God. So that makes us look different than the world. Listen, do you know how backwards this is from the world? I'm sure you do. If you've lived any length of time as a believer in this world, you know how backwards that is to the world. The enemy loves nothing more than to derail us from God's path. The enemy's goal is to derail us from God and to get us off track with the Lord in the upright living to his standards and cause us to stop obeying the truth. That's what Satan's job is. His job is to get us into doubt. His job is to cause us to live in a way that doesn't represent the Lord, to live in such a way that doesn't point to God at all or bring him glory at all. Actually, it's quite the opposite. But God, when we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God imparts righteousness to us based on what Jesus did. Not us. Not us. And then the Holy Spirit takes up residence in us and causes us to do the things that we cannot do in our own strength. It's called sanctification. Sanctification in its verb form, sanctified, literally means to set apart for special use or purpose. That is, to make holy or sacred. Therefore, sanctification refers to the state of being set apart, made holy. The Holy Spirit's job is to cause us to live beyond ourselves. He is to chip away at everything in us that does not look like Jesus and replace it with his righteous standard. You know, I done a study once that compared the different ways that people view righteousness. And listen, the first one is perfect righteousness. And as in God's perfect righteousness. So his standard of righteousness is completely out of reach because not even the most good person can reach the standard of perfection. You know, and then there's comparative righteousness. Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so, so I'm doing pretty good in the eyes of God. We are called to live by God's standards and his expectations, not the world. So we cannot compare ourselves to people who we think are doing worse than us or to people who are doing better than us and think that we are righteous in God's sight by our actions alone. It's not how it works because there's imputed righteousness. This is the righteousness that on the cross Jesus acquired for us. When we trust Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, the penalty of sin is removed and the gift of God's own righteousness is given to us. The perfection and holiness of God has become ours in Christ. So when God looks at us, he no longer sees our sins. He sees us through the blood-stained filter of his only begotten son, the perfect lamb slain for us. We no longer need to strive for perfection and wear ourselves out. We are completely righteous because of Christ's payment for us. Our current status 
and position is one of complete righteousness before God. You're righteous and I'm righteous. Praise God for that. When we rely and live by the truth, John 8, 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for what he did for us because we could never do it for ourselves, Lord. And you knew it. That's why you sent your one and only son. And we just thank you for it, Lord. Help us to receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I hope that word encouraged you. And I just want to ask you if you would please subscribe to this channel so that we can continue to build a community of real Jesus followers. I'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.